The NCAA has denied linebacker Drew Singleton's appeal to return to Rutgers. And Greg Schiano said, basically, they ruled against him. Uh, let me tell you the story of Drew Singleton here. Singleton, once they lost their finale in the regular season, school went 5-7, and seven, or the team went 5-7, and seven, so they were not supposed to go to a bowl game. He signed with an agent, was going to go to the NFL draft, and everything seemed totally fine. And instead, they ended up getting a call. Their, what is it, the ARP? Uh, their, their ARP scores. Oh, I don't think that's right. Hey, you guys correct me in the comments. I, I went blank for a minute. Uh, but their, their scores were high enough that they were asked to be in a bowl game when they did not have enough 6-6 six and six teams. So they accepted it on like a week's notice, right? Eight days, I think, maybe something like that. They agreed to be in the Tax Slayer Gator Bowl, and they decided, okay, yeah, we're going to go do that. So Singleton, after they had not been working out, they get out of their regular season stuff, et cetera. Uh, they come back in, they start to practice, et cetera, and they are getting ready to go play in the Tax Slayer Bowl. So he goes and plays. And then he gets injured in this game. And he had already signed with an agent. He was already getting ready to go to the NFL draft. But the injury caused it to where he was not drafted. And he requested from the NCAA that he be allowed to come back to school for one more year to play at Rutgers because the injury, he can heal up in time to play for the season. But if you are an NFL team and you're trying to figure out the best value in some of those late round picks, et cetera, do you take a chance on a player that, you know, is coming off of an injury, or do you just go with somebody else? I, I mean, it makes sense. And yet, in this instance, the NCAA said uh, that no, he cannot come back because he signed with an agent. Um, Chiano said this I stated my feelings beforehand. They want guys to play in bowl games. I don't know. Not many teams have accepted a bowl game on eight days' notice, had two practices, and went and played. I don't think so. A draft-eligible player comes back to play, and to me, that's pretty special. Unfortunately, he got injured. I just struggle. I think that's extenuating circumstances. I understand the whole amateurism rule, but eight days' notice, that's extenuating circumstances. I'm not sure how you can define it. You get a team ready to go, get a plane during the second biggest outbreak of COVID, and say that's not extenuating circumstances. I don't understand that. Now, I... I tend to agree with him because I think if you are the NCAA, if you are college football and you are wanting to get more players to play into bowl games or play in bowl games, you would want to approve this because you want players to have a reason to be able to come back or go or whatever. You're already, the amateurism part of this is comical at best because you've already got players that are signing with agents for NIL representation. And that's totally legal. But you can't sign with an agent to help you prepare for the NFL draft and then be allowed to come back to play after you've already signed away that you're going to the NFL. Like, that is mind-blowing. Absolutely mind-blowing that they decided to rule against this. So, again, NCAA, an old, decrepit organization that is going away eventually anyway, decided to actually rule against something this time and yet they can't even enforce their own rules. Like, I'm curious what would happen if Rutgers were to play this kid anyway. I mean, <laughs> like, it doesn't make any sense. So, who knows? This is a, a very interesting topic, one that, that irritates me to no end. But, whew, I mean, just tough, tough luck for that kid. Uh, went out, played in the bowl game, tried to do what was right for his teammates, Gets hurt, doesn't get drafted, wants to come back and play for another year, and now has nowhere to go. I mean, it just sucks. It just sucks. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.